now we have the wonderful, the amazing, the super funny, Orlando Jones coming in soon. Yeah, so, so that was good. And here we are. So Orlando Jones has had a steady film career. He's been he's played on Drumline, North Carolina Film, Sleepy Hollow, and The Office, including so much more. We're going to start with the throwback stuff first. So thank you so much for calling in today, Orlando Jones. I am so excited to have you. You're an idol. I, I mean, I wow. First of all, uh, thank you for saying those kind things, and I will get your check over to you immediately. <laughs> thank you. Let me spell my name right for you. Just kidding. <laughs> So seriously, we're so grateful to have you on here. And for the one person who's living under a rock, can you just tell them how you got your start? Because you started off in the South. So just to hear for all the other people who are here in the South, get inspired on how you made that transition to the, where you are now in Mr. Hollywood. Oh, gosh, let's see. I think I was um, I was running an advertising agency, uh, a small agency production company here in the south and doing work mostly in north carolina well south carolina georgia uh, north carolina and that led me to doing a couple big food line ads and such wow and uh ah. after getting uh those those ads uh, done i think they're called donut holes uh, they're kind of like the ones that uh, you would see uh uh, Ernest do. Uh, Ernest goes to jail. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember that. I actually do remember that now. See? Do you remember those? Yeah, I do. Oh, I do. Donut holes. Yeah. So okay. uh, yeah, but, uh, his were um, those. He's you know he'd do it for the he'd do it for a car company or the power company, and basically it was always him doing it wrong, and some spokesperson <laughs> in the middle going, "Don't be like that idiot. <laughs> uh, don't do it with us." Yeah. So I made those type of ads and um, uh, oh. with my production company agency, and um, that was it. And I got a job writing on a different world. Nice. Um, after wow. that, and um, dropped out of college and moved to California to start writing. That'll do it. Wow, different world. Dropped out of college. Who knew? So, uh, do you have any advice for actors since you started from writing first? Yeah. Do I have any advice for actors? Yeah. Like as far as like um, you started yeah, in writing, I, I do you think, think writing is the best way to start? As far as just learning the craft from that point of view, or do you think it's completely different? You should just start with acting. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna act, I would say act. I mean, I think mostly you just need um, stage time. Uh, mm -hmm. There, there's something to be said for being being on stage, on your feet, doing it, and it doesn't matter where you do that. It's just getting on your feet and doing it. So, to me, I think the idea that you're gonna you're gonna go to California with no experience whatsoever, or go to New York with no experience whatsoever never having been on your feet is a mistake you know they have theater here they have right. you know local ads and commercials here mm -hmm. so right. there's really nothing stopping you from starting in the place where you're standing you just have to be willing to go search that out and that's not about being a star that's how you learn the craft <laughs> i would agree with that and so today on the e spot with camille i have the orlando jones he portrayed a god mr nancy on american gods who was known for his monologues angry gets things done and freedom isn't free last month you shared with fans to our shock that you weren't going to be a part of season three what can you share about what's going on with that right now fag is in, in the midst of their investigation right now so it's uh, really in, in their hands to sort of go through and parse through all the details and madness to uh, make a determination of what, you know, should have happened versus what did happen. Um, and I'm sure they'll be updating uh, as uh, as things move forward, but that's where it is now, and that, I believe, just started uh, about four or five days ago. Okay. Now, because I am a true fan, and I started watching American Gods because of Mr. Nancy, I have to ask you, what was your... Like, what was your vision with Mr. Nancy? Where did you want to see him go in season three? What are we going to miss that we're not going to get in season three? <laughs> um, look, I think the, 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 in American Gods, obviously, it's a, a series about these new gods and these old gods. Mr. Nancy is one of the old gods. And they are they're at war. And, but primarily, that's just because they want, they want worship, right? They're gods who came from other other places with immigrants who came to America. So they're kind of 
strangers in a strange land, but they still need worship in order to survive and, and be viable. So for me, it was always Nancy using or connecting himself with people who could help him get his story out, his, his narrative. Mm -hmm. And that probably would have been something like tech boy or new media because that was the God that helped Bilquis, one of the other old gods, right, to sort of, of get on her feet and find her worship in the digital world. So given mm -hmm. his interest in, in, in Bilquist and his relationship to Bilquis, it seemed the natural thing would be that he would find himself with Tech Boy, and the Tech Boy would help him uh, use technology to, um, mm. to make the old gods more powerful in the war. Oh, man, I'm so sad. You're not going to be a part of that. I don't even want to see what they're going to do. I'm sure they're going to ruin it. <laughs> so have you gotten any pushback? Or I know Gabrielle Union has come out with support. So have you gotten any pushback or has it just been support for calling the attention for the toxic work environment? No, I, 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 don't, I don't know who would push back at, at this juncture. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward forward uh and i would say it's, it's a bit more than toxic work environment in this particular case you know the problem that they ran into was that we waited or and fans waited two years between season one and season two in season two obviously i was writing on the show producing the show uh, working as one of the producers on the show and also acting on the show and that work is what allowed us to to get a pickup for season three mm -hmm. so this was clearly where they're People were, you're, you're going to write, produce, and star in the show in season three. And that's what I had been told since the show was picked up in, you know, April. So April, Jeez. May, June, July, August, September, that was the belief system. And then at the last minute, they were like, well, no, we're not going to pick up your option. I'm like, Jeez. okay, so you're firing me. Got that part. Um, but the funniest part was, at least to me, was to put out the video that we put out in December mm -hmm. where I just sort of reset what the showrunner was saying, but I thought the showrunner's response was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> he basically was, he said, I'm not from Connecticut. So basically Jeez. like everything else you said about me is true, but I'm not from Connecticut. <laughs> That's the part you got wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part you got wrong. You didn't get wrong that I write from a black male perspective. You, you didn't get white. wrong yeah. that I think angry get stuff done is the wrong message for black America, but I am not from Connecticut. That made oh, me really laugh geez. out loud. Um, <laughs> and I think the secondary part of that is that, you know, any actor on any show, is always in bed uh, with the studio and they have your yeah. your television rights. So it's just strange for them to tell me something in September that in theory they could have told me in April right. and let me go work elsewhere. So it's sort of a double thing there. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with not only a toxic work environment because they weren't able to write any of the characters of colors or disenfranchised characters. So mm -hmm. new media who's played by Kai and Kim, a uh, Korean um, uh, actress wasn't written, you know, Bill Quiz played by Yuchiti Bidaki, uh, mm -hmm. black female, not written. Mr. Nancy uh, played by myself, um, you know, not written. Wow. Uh, Shadow moon uh, lead of the show, um, barely written in a very strange way. Nice. Um, so when you looked at the disenfranchised characters, you know, Salim and the Jinn, uh, played by Musa and Omid, two uh, Muslim gay characters, not written. So you found yourself in this very bizarre thing where the LGBT characters aren't written, the mm -hmm. female characters aren't written, even Laura Moon, uh, uh, played by... Oh, the um, zombie, right. Uh, em Emily, not written. So it, it was bizarre in that the white female characters, the black female characters, the Asian female characters, the black male characters. The I'm noticing a pattern. Characters. <laughs> so Jeez. that that was really the work that I found myself having to get involved in and get done and frankly work with those actors to try and make sure that what we were doing was a continuation of what audiences had seen in season one. Wow. That was the work that Fremantle had essentially not done in a two-year hiatus. Wow. So th that's, for me, it was like, I'll do this work that you're asking me to do because I have to do it for myself as well. Mm. But it doesn't make any sense to me that, you know, you're asking me to do it for free right. um, because I'm a Writers Guild member. So I don't know, 
you guys are asking me to be on a writer's guild show <laughs> and go against my writer's guild, they'll kick me out of the guild. Like, what are you crazy? And yeah, you'll you be paid a, a bunch of people to do this. They're just <laughs> at home. It, yeah. was, it was very bizarre. So I, I find that in this scenario, it's, it's, it's all these elements or you got a toxic work environment. You got people who are asking you to go against your guild. You got people who don't want to pay you for the work that you're doing. And then you have people who are accusing you of doing things that are racially motivated when they mm. wrote, created and approved a character. Right. <laughs> it's not like the books weren't written. Race. I'm like, <laughs> Right, exactly. I'm like, I, I didn't do any of this. You guys did all this. You hired me. I came into it. So I think all of those things, that's a lot to ask any any person at any job to deal with. But for me, it's just equitable treatment. It, it doesn't matter. You can't treat somebody bad because they're, you know, they're heavy set. You can't treat somebody bad because they got sweaty palms, because they're female, because they're black. It doesn't matter what the reason is. Right. It just matters that if you're the biggest entertainment company in the world like Fremantle, the least you should be able to do is treat me equitably, treat Gabrielle Union equitably. You know, that's just normal business when you're a company that big. And that's really what they, what they failed to do. That's right. Well, how can we support you moving forward? Do you want us to boycott, write letters to Fremantle or Stars, <laughs> or are you already like I'm on to the next project? I, I've known about this for a while. Uh, to be honest with you, it's very much to me uh, it is on to the next thing to a certain degree. But I think consumers have a right to know um, how they're going to spend their money and where they should spend their money. Um, and in this particular case, you know, as I, I said in the video. They let me go September 10th, and my work from season two, uh, Mr. Nancy and the Funeral Home, that went viral in October and November. Mm. And I was just waiting for somebody to say, well, he's not going to be on the show. Right. But by the time we got to December, and it was still going viral on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, Jeez. and people were sending me all these messages you know, saying, I love Mr. Nancy, I've, I've got to catch up on the show, or I didn't know about Mr. Nancy, and now I want to go see the show. But my name was still on the poster. Mm -hmm. They were still adding stars and adding Fremantle, saying we're binging the show. I just bought a subscription. So my thing was, mm -hmm. when are you guys going to tell these people that I'm not going to be there rather than selling subscriptions off of my name? Mm -hmm. Wow. That, you know, the consumer fans had a right to know. And because suddenly I had thousands of inbox messages, I was like, do I answer all these inbox messages and be like, thank you for your message. I'm glad you love Mr. Nancy. He will not be on season three of American Gods. Like, when, when does that part happen? And I waited until December. So I gave them another three months to do the right thing. So for me, if that makes you go, I don't want to deal with this type of studio or network, then, then that's your choice. If you feel like, hey, I want to continue to support these actors and follow this story, then that's you too. But you know, you certainly had a right to know. I know. So today on the eSpot, we have no other than Orlando Jones, who's had a lot of new projects coming up. His company, Drive-By Entertainment, advises progressive brands on building and maintaining authentic, meaningful relationships with us super fans. So tell us a little bit more about Drive-By Entertainment. Listen, hunty, oh? you've got to help these people. <laughs> like, <laughs> these super people fans. Just confused. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, well, mostly what it is is that, as you know, in any movie or television show, people watch during the season or when it comes out, and then the studio and the network kind of go, bye, and they don't have anything to say to fans anymore. Mm -hmm. But the fans are still there. Mm -hmm. So we help brands stay and connect with those fans that showed up to watch whatever the show was because – you know, there's about 40 weeks where they're doing, fans are doing and engaged in other things when there's nobody there. So uh, we help them do that and create an authentic relationship with the fan rather than just showing up during the season and saying goodbye. We might see y'all in 40 weeks. We <laughs> might, might not. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you share about upcoming projects you have going on? I know there's the Good Lord Bird and you're talking something podcast. There's a lot going on. Can you tell us more about it? <laughs> There's the Good Lord Bird's a pretty amazing piece. Ethan Hawke had hit me up, and uh, he was uh, taking James McRide's uh, National Book Award book and making it in a limited series with Showtime. Um, what I love about the Good Lord Bird is it's about an abolitionist, uh, this guy named John Brown, who believed that God put him on this earth to fight for the emancipation of slaves. 
um, this was a white man, and he, in, in real history, he staged a, a, a takeover of Harper's Ferry. He tried to take the armory to get all the, the guns from that to create a slave uprising. So it's a beautiful book, but what's amazing about the book is how funny it is. It starts off with John Brown taking over this, this, this place, and whenever he showed up somewhere, he would emancipate the slaves. So he emancipates this young boy. But when he sees the boy, it's, he's a biracial kid. He thinks it's a girl. So they throw him a skirt, and they say, come on, girl, let's go. And the young boy then has to continue pre pretending to be a girl, and the oh, wow. story is told through his perspective because the boy realizes this girl thing is less work, and people <laughs> don't really mess with me. So I'm just going to go along with this girl he calls me. <laughs> That's hilarious. And he goes through telling the story of John Brown. So uh, amazing piece. That'll be Showtime 2020. And uh, Gabrielle uh, Union and I actually just connected. So I'm going to go do her show, L.A.'s Finest oh, uh, in L.A., wow. which will be a lot of fun. And uh, I'll be announcing a bunch of stuff after that. But right for right now, that's enough. <laughs> I'm going to go do those too. <laughs> no, I hear that. Well, we appreciate you so much coming in today. Yes, and can absolutely. you please tell everyone in case they don't know, I don't know why they wouldn't, how they can follow you, how they can keep up with you, how they can find out about your podcast and everything else that you got going on or coming up. At the Orlando Jones is, is my handle. That's my tag and whatnot. And uh, they can come check me out on any social media at, at the Orlando Jones or Obviously, you can come check me out with Camille and whatnot. I mean, y'all were just playing some 80s music. I was yeah. dancing around here in a leopard print robe. I thought it was about to go down. <laughs> I know, that's right. <laughs> you can come in and roll with us anytime you want to. Anytime. I mean, it's not that far of a drive from where you are. Get up in that conversation. That's what we need to be at. Come on. You are welcome anytime. We, yeah, we'll we, even put you up. We two hours away from you, so you come on holler us. That's what we got to do, man. Oh, uh, That's true. I would definitely come, come through. That would, that, would, that would be hot, especially since y'all finna have a fight over Duke, North Carolina, basketball i can't wait to see that well, wait, wait, right. trust me man it's, Look, it's going wait, down what side are you on first yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. you might have to revoke yeah. your what um invitation. Am I on? Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah okay let, 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 first of all let's just be clear i live in north carolina mm -hmm. okay okay uh I have never been a, a, a Duke fan. My man. Uh, my oh. man. My man for the grand. Boo. You know what? That's what I'm talking about. Boo. I really don't think it <laughs> makes a mean, damn bit of difference. I, I, I mean, I, seriously, I don't know how much we can put. Basketball coach. I literally grew up in this madness. Oh, right. Like, Your you dad know. was with the Phillies. Oh. Uh, too, Phillies, right? But, you know, he coached at South Carolina State, coached at Florida State and what have you. So, you know, I grew up with Dean Smith oh, and the whole oh, thing. So. Uh-oh. Here we hey, go. Hey, hey, now like, they're wait, interested. I, I, actually, actually uh, <laughs> you my man, 50 grand, even better oh, now, Carolina. Goodness. But I do have a question for you real quickly, though. Uh, uh -huh. The, the Drumline the, the drum movie, I mean, obviously, all of us associated with HBCUs. Yeah. Right. And bands are a huge part of that whole process. Exactly. How was that experience yeah. for you when, when you guys did, did that movie, which was great? Oh, that was crazy fun. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Dallas Austin uh, is really the story is about Dallas Austin's life. Mm -hmm. Oh, but and wow. He, me, he's part of your show. Dallas Austin was that kid. What literally happened was when Dallas was in high school, he couldn't read music. He still can't read music, oh, but wow. he was an insane drummer. And all of his brothers had already gone through the high school, so he knew all the cadences to everything when he was a freshman. And Dallas went through that experience in college. For the movie, we moved it from high school to college. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my dad coached at Florida State. I grew up running around with Dr. White at Florida A&M, like wow. running around in the band field. So, you know, the, I grew up in the black H HBCU tradition. Now. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a blue, black dude from the South. That's just what it is, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty exactly. Much, pretty much. Right? So for me, it was about bringing that part of, like, our culture to everybody because show style marching bands is definitely like core style marching bands but that was what was exciting to me about it uh, and uh, it was mad fun to do in it you know we were in Atlanta and we were at Battle of the Bands and all that but the funniest part was trying to get Zoe Saldana to understand what it was because she's, she's a Latina <laughs> That's right. oh wait but she played Nina Simone she's black <laughs> she played that later <laughs> no, no we, we, so he said you, you can call her about that later I'm telling you we can Oh, Look, I'm still bitter. Nina Simone's from North Carolina. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> oh, that's 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 so wow, funny. Wow, that's she hilarious. Said, Wait a minute, what's going on right now? What's, what's <laughs> mm, mm, mm. But, but you but out. you already oh. my boy. You a Carolina guy? You okay with oh, me? Oh my god! I guess you can still. Oh come. yeah, I'm a Carolina boy from way back for sure. Oh, Born in god. Alabama, grew up in the Carolinas, man. Alabama. All day long. So drumline was a lot of fun, but it was just funny because. Okay. If you didn't know show style marching band, it was just like somebody asking you questions all the time because people would turn to you and say, yeah. nah, do they do that in show style? Is that okay? Y'all will be doing it. Is that the right thing to do? And I, <laughs> wow. I'm like, what? Why don't y'all just go to homecoming? <laughs> exactly. Go to homecoming. Go to a classic. Go to a classic. A classic all homecoming. are welcome. He said, he said, we, all are he, welcome. Said, he said, we're not filming today. We're having a road trip. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on. We in Atlanta. Let's roll down the freak nigga. And see That's going. exactly oh. right. Let's go to some research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, man. It's been, a, it's been our pleasure having you on. You know you what? Got, we're going to call you back. We're going to talk about some other stuff with you. Because, my right, fact, in Anytime you want to come up and hang out on the show with us, you are more you, than welcome. Camille, Camille, all of us, we're, anytime you're ready, we're ready to do it, my friend. We're ready. Okay, hold on. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you have to talk to me into it. I'm good. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for coming in. This is the E Spot with Camille. You can check me out on The Real Camille Cower yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, and CK on Air. One on Twitter because we were with the sports shop. But we're never number two. That's exactly right. Say it again. We're the sports shop. We're never number two. <laughs> ever, ever.